So, President Trump has signed off on a repeal of a law which would have tightened regulations on how internet service providers use consumers' data. ISPs can currently sell Americans' browsing history, financial and health information, and other personal details to third parties. Now, the law would have meant they'd have to ask permission first. Supporters of the rollback say it'll increase competition. Critics say it'll have a chilling effect on online privacy. Well, let's get some insight uh, into this now from my next two guests. Lynn Follinsby is from US Telecom, and Nula O'Connor is President and Chief Executive of the Center for Democracy and Technology. Um, Lynn, I'd just like to start with you first, and hello to you uh, both. Um, as a member of, of the telecom industry, the industry we're talking about, what changes are consumers going to see now that this law has been rolled back? How much privacy do they have online? Quite frankly, uh, nothing has changed as far as consumers are concerned. The FCC adopted these rules late last year, but they had not gone into effect. So this, this uh, congressional repeal essentially is just a reset button. The status quo stays exactly as it is. Okay, so uh, now that it's been actually repealed, is there pressure under the industry, despite the fact that they want to make money out of our data, to make sure that our privacy is safe to a degree, to make sure that we're not under surveillance? Yes, absolutely. I mean, ISPs, their customers are, you know, their utmost concern, and their privacy is very, very important to the providers. So there'll be internal um, policies, they... there'll be industry policies that, that, that will protect the rights of the consumer, despite the rollback of this law. Is that what you're saying? Yes, those privacy policies already exist, and in fact, um, the FTC had adopted in 2012 a industry privacy policy that com uh, ISPs have continued to abide by ever since um, the FCC took jurisdiction. Okay, Nula, is that good enough? So last week's action really eliminated what most of us, I think, would think of as basic privacy protections about how information is collected, used, transferred, and sold. Um, and as to a very important sector, as you know, in the United States, we have a sectoral approach to privacy. Each industry has its own regulator. Internet companies have been regulated heavily by, for 20 years or more by the Federal Trade Commission. The telecoms, the ISPs, are regulated by the FCC. Those are separate agencies and with separate rules. We see this as a rollback of some important protections that really equalize and level the playing field. But even more, your ISP is the provider that is the pipe into your home for your television, your telephone, your internet service provider and also all of your Internet of Things devices which are increasingly going to create and collect information about you in what seem like mundane habits but really are very intimate details about your most personal lives and and, and habits so we're concerned about the lack of protections that now exist in the United States for this sector and we think that a rollback to the status quo is not a good thing obviously we didn't think the status quo was good enough Lynn, uh, therefore, on the face of it, despite uh, Google or Facebook's policies and other internet providers' policies, we no longer really have any privacy online, do we? And that information is going to be used to target us, in the very least, it's annoying, uh, with products that we might be interested in uh, and directing us to other websites. But is there any danger that this information could be used for surveillance by government agencies as well? Will that information be handed over? No, absolutely not. I mean, this is the this is essentially a um, privacy policies that have to do with what the ISPs or any other internet ecosystem company might do with the information for mostly for advertising purposes to do targeted advertising to ease in navigation um, to aid in innovation. It, it is not anything to do with surveillance. Okay, um, but, but, you know, but some of that information you're talking about is our health history, our health records, very private information. When we go to the yes. doctor, we, we don't expect our records to be uh, sold to other people. Why should it be any different online? Well, and you know, honestly, the, those, those types of information, social security numbers, health care information, ch children's information, all of that has always been considered sensitive information, which require, the FTC has always required um, that you get permission to use that information. The, Providers have pledged before um, any of this even happened to continue to abide by those policies and that they will not share that information without express consent. Nula, it does sound from what Lynn is saying and, and what other industries uh, online are saying that, that, that have this data is, yeah, okay, it's going to be shared, it's going to be sold, but it's going to be handled very carefully and no government agency can just come in and grab that information without good reason. 
I'm so delighted you brought up the surveillance issue because this is exactly the kind of information that government, both law enforcement and national security agencies, are really eager to get their hands on. The most granular data about you, the most intimate details of your personal lives, often infer and, and can be uh, evocative of what your habits and beliefs and, 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 and positions on political issues and other issues and other behaviors can be. So we would be very concerned, and frankly, law enforcement's already shown an appetite for this kind of really mundane data in, in cases across the United States involving internet providers, ser internet service providers, and the data inside your home. Um, and if they, the service providers, and I'm so heartened by the comments that a number of the telecoms in the United States have made in the last few weeks, but if there was no problem with these regulations, I really do question why they, there was such a push to roll them back. We believe that, you know, the, the companies are intending to make good on their word, but we do need regulation for the most extreme cases and the bad actors among us. Okay, well, let me put that to Lynn. What does the industry care more? about privacy or money that they could make from that data? They care about privacy. And quite frankly, the, the rules that were adopted by the FCC last year created an unlevel playing field where the Googles and Amazons and your edge providers of the world were being treated differently than ISPs. And, so Lynn, why, and frankly, why, 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 would the, why have so many companies pushed for the rollback for Donald Trump to do what he's done if they care more about privacy than money? Because they think that the FTC's privacy policies that have been in existence for years, that they have been abiding by, work. And they would want to have some kind, if their FCC is going to create some kind of rules, those should be harmonized with the FTC rules. Nula, do they work? Do those internal policies of companies work? The FTC Section 5 uh, Act applies only to the internet companies. The telecoms are expressly exempt from that law. So while I've so thrilled that they want to abide by it. They are not actually covered by it under the, the, the scope of that law. So we, we believe that companies should do the right thing, but we also believe there should be rules in place that, that can be harmonized, that can be create a level field, playing field for all companies. But that's not what exists today after this action. Then what's your response to what we've just heard from Nula? That is, well, the, the, the rollback of the order that was adopted last year leaves open the opportunity for the FCC to create new rules that do harmonize with the FTC rules. And that's essentially what we're working towards, is something that works for the entire Internet ecosystem. Nicola, can I ask you, uh, there's going to be a lot of people watching this, not just in America, but around the world as well, because they're going to be logging onto American company websites, uh, and, and there's a similar situation in other countries too. Is there anything we can do to protect our privacy? I'm so glad you asked that question because you should, first of all, come to the CDT website at cdt.org to learn about some of the tools you can use right now. Things like HTTPS, look for the lock in the corner of your website browsing bar to make sure that your, the company you're doing business with is using the highest quality and quite highest standard of, of security for your web browser. Using VPNs, virtual private networks, um, being mindful of the data that you're giving out to these companies, all of these are good steps that individuals should and can take right now. But the reality is your relationship with your ISP, your internet service provider, is unavoidable in most parts, at least of this country, in many parts of the world. You have one choice of one company. And because of that really intimate and, and comprehensive relationship, we believe there need to be clear rules, clear standards, and that sh they should certainly apply to any company that's doing that kind of service, that's providing that kind of service to you. Nula, thank you. Nula O'Connor there from uh, CDT, and also Lynn Follinsby from US Telecom. Thank you very much for your time here on the BBC. Thank you.